Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of Why I Am So Wise by Friedrich Nietzsche. So this is one of the Penguin Books Great Ideas books. I've actually really been enjoying these. I was looking around to see if you could get a full box set of them, but unfortunately you can't. Um, and this does actually, it contains basically uh, part of Twilight of the Idols and part of Eke Homo. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read you the little blurb in this bit on the front, then we'll go through and check out some of my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So. Dane reads. One of the most iconoclastic thinkers of all time, Friedrich Nietzsche continues to challenge the boundaries of conventional religion and morality with his subversive theories of the Superman, the individual will, the death of God, and the triumph of an all-powerful human life force. And on the front it says, I know my fate. One day there will be associated with my name the recollection of something frightful, of a crisis like no other before on Earth, of the profoundest collision of conscience. So here he talks about his... Um thus spake Zarathustra and he says within my writings my Zarathustra stands by itself I have with this book given mankind the greatest gift that has ever been given it with a voice that speaks across millennia it is not only the most exalted book that exists the actual book of the air of the heights the entire fact man lies at a tremendous distance beneath it it is also the profoundest, born out of the innermost abundance of truth, an inexhaustible well into which no bucket descends without coming up filled with golden goodness. So you could say he's, he's, he's proud of that one. He says, my blood flows slowly. No one has ever been able to diagnose fever in me. A doctor who treated me for some time as a nervous case said at last, no, there is nothing wrong with your nerves. It is only I who am nervous. I thought this was interesting as well. Um, obviously, I mean, so, I've always found Nietzsche to be a little bit overwritten, but I never know how much of that is due to the translation. This one is translated by R.J. Hollingdale. I'm just going to read this long old chapter out. May I venture to indicate one last trait of my nature which creates for me no little difficulty in my relations with others. I possess a perfectly uncanny sensitivity of the instinct for cleanliness, so that I perceive psychologically, smell, the proximity, or what am I saying, the innermost parts, the entrails of every soul. I have in this sensitivity psychological antennae with which I touch and take hold of every secret, all the concealed dirt at the bottom of many a nature, perhaps conditioned by bad blood but whitewashed by education, is known to me almost on first contact. If I have observed correctly, such natures unendurable to my sense of cleanliness for their part also sense the caution of my disgust. They do not thereby become any sweeter smelling. As has always been customary with me, an extreme cleanliness in relation to me is a presupposition of my existence. I perish under unclean conditions. I swim and bathe and splash continually, as it were, in water, in any kind of perfectly transparent and glittering element. This makes traffic with people no small test of my patience. My humanity consists not in feeling for and with man, but in enduring that I do feel for and with him. My humanity is a continual self-overcoming, but I have need of solitude, that is to say recovery, return to myself, the breath of a free, light, playful air. My entire Zarathustra is a dizzy ram on solitude, or, if I have been understood, on cleanliness. Fortunately, not on pure folly. He who has eyes for colours will call it diamond. Disgust at mankind, at the rabble, has always been my greatest danger. And this is the start of why I am so clever, and there's some interesting stuff on atheism here as well, which I kind of related to, so... Why do I know a few more things? Why am I so clever altogether? I have never reflected on questions that are none. I have, never squan I have not squandered myself. I have, for example, no experience of actual religious difficulties. I am entirely at a loss to know to what extent I ought to have felt sinful. I likewise lack a reliable criterion of a pang of conscience. From what one hears of it, a pang of conscience does not seem to me anything respectable. I should not like to leave an act in the lurch afterwards. I would, as a matter of principle, prefer to leave the evil outcome, the consequences, out of the question of values. When the outcome is evil, one can easily lose the true eye for what one has done. A pang of conscience seems to me a kind of evil eye. To honour to oneself something that went wrong, all the more because it went wrong, that rather would accord with my morality. God, immorality of the soul, redemption, the beyond, all of them concepts to which I have given no attention and no time, not even as a child. Perhaps I was never childish enough for it. I have absolutely no knowledge of atheism as an outcome of reasoning, still less as an event. With me it is obvious by instinct. I am too inquisitive, too questionable, too high-spirited to rest content with a crude answer. God is a crude answer, a piece of indelicacy against us thinkers. Fundamentally, even a crude prohibition to us, you shall not think. And this goes on for another three pages, all as that one paragraph. And he talks about, uh, most closely related to the question of nutriment is the question of place and climate. He says, make a list of the places where there are and have been gifted men, where wit, refinement, malice are a part of happiness, where genius has almost necessarily made its home. They all possess an excellent dry air. Paris, Provence, Florence, Jerusalem, Athens. 
Don't know if I agree with him on that one, but still. And then we have why I write such good books. And I just like the line here, ultimately no one can extract from things, books included, more than he already knows. And then we have why I'm a destiny, and this has um, the, the bit that starts with the beginning as well. So I'm just going to read this last bit out to see us out from this review. Why I am a destiny. I know my fate. One day there will be associated with my name the recollection of something frightful, of a crisis like no other before on earth, of the profoundest collision of conscience, of a decision evoked against everything that until then had been believed in, demanded, sanctified. I am not a man, I am dynamite, and with all that there is nothing in me of a founder of a religion. Religions are affairs of the rabble, I have need of washing my hands after contact with religious people. I do not want believers, I think I am too malicious to believe in myself, I never speak to masses. I have a terrible fear I shall one day be pronounced holy. One will guess why I bring out this book beforehand. It is intended to prevent people from making mischief with me. I do not want to be a saint, rather even a buffoon. Perhaps I am a buffoon. And nonetheless, or rather not nonetheless, for there has hitherto been nothing more mendacious than saints. The truth speaks out of me. But my truth is dreadful, for hitherto the lie has been called truth. Re-evaluation of all values. This is my formula for an act of supreme coming to oneself on the part of mankind, which in me has become flesh and genius. It is my fate to have to be the first decent human being, to know myself in opposition to the mendaciousness of millennia. I was the first to discover the truth, in that I was the first to sense, smell, the lie is lie. My genius is in my nostrils. I contradict as has never been contradicted, and am nonetheless the opposite of a negative spirit. I am a bringer of good tidings such as there has never been. I know tasks from such a height that any conception of them has a third toe been lacking. Only after me is it possible to hope again. With all that, I am necessarily a man of fatality. For when truth steps into battle with a lie of millennia, we shall have convulsions, an earthquake spasm, a transposition of valley and mountain such as never been dreamed of. The concept politics has then become completely absorbed into a war of spirits. All the power structures of the old society have been blown into the air. They one and all respond on the lie. There will be wars such as there have never yet been on earth. Only after me will there be grand politics on earth. So yeah. Why I Am So Wise by Friedrich Nietzsche. I think it's a pretty good little introduction to his stuff. I mean, if you've read all of Nietzsche's published works, you'll have already read this because it's just extracts from other stuff. But I thought it was pretty readable. Um, I mean, obviously, you have to think a lot, but that's kind of why you read books like this. All in all, I gave it a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5. I did enjoy it, and I'll be reading more Nietzsche soon. So there we have it, that's what I made of Why I Am So Wise by Friedrich Nietzsche. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.